back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's time for a second field trip of the year. Today, we're going to the South Carolina Aquarium. It has over 4,500 animals. Stick around, we'll show you how we homeschool at the aquarium so you can do something similar. We drove three and a half hours to Charleston. Why? Because Charleston has a great aquarium. And two, Charleston's just great. There are a lot of different ways to homeschool at a place like an aquarium. With a young learner, one of the ways you can do it is introduce new terms like amphibians or mammals. And then as you walk around the aquarium, he can identify what species or category they belong to. You can even do terms like invertebrates and vertebrates. Jellyfish and vertebrates. With my older learner, today we're getting back on our series on taxonomy. We're going to be studying phylum and the different categories that there are. And with over 30 different phylum, we're going to try and identify as many as we can. What you don't want to do is just show up without a plan. Because if you show up without a plan, all you end up doing is just looking around at animals. Of course, the South Carolina Aquarium is AZA certified. And if you're not familiar with what AZA certification is, you should check out our video of when we went to the zoo and talk more about it but it basically guarantees that the zoo or aquarium you're visiting is all about rehabilitation. One of the first exhibits in the aquarium talks about how they rescue sick and injured turtles and then rehabilitate them so they can be released back into the wild. That can be a homeschool lesson in and of itself. They have this really cool interactive exhibit where the child can simulate taking x-rays of the turtle and identifying the problem. They can even get an up-close look at an actual operating room. Unfortunately, there wasn't an operation going on at the time we were there. I say unfortunately, but that's probably good news for the turtles. The rehabilitation of turtles is largely supported by donations, and unfortunately, due to the coronavirus pandemic, those donations have dropped significantly. If you feel like this is something your family or homeschooling cooperative would like to support, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get more information and donate. Another idea for homeschooling at the aquarium is going in with a focus on studying just the things you're able to touch. In this case, the kids were able to touch and feed the stingrays and really enjoyed it. Also, in this case, the kids were able to touch and interact with horseshoe crabs while the zoo employees taught them interesting facts about the species. I know I make it sound like it's all about education, but I realize deep down all they want to do is play in the gift shop. Jellyfish phylum nadaria. So editing John here, and it's 5.30 in the morning. The rest of this video is going to be about taxonomy. And if you're keeping score, that's our third video on taxonomy. My plan over the next week is to splice all our videos on taxonomy into one video so your kids can watch that. That video will have our associated assessment and worksheet for them to complete. If you didn't know already, which hopefully you did, our website, homeschoolscienceclub.com, has assessments that go along with a lot of our videos. That way your kids can watch the videos, do the assessments, you can have the answer key, and you've got a complete science lesson. All free. Okay, that's enough about that. Back to the video. Jellyfish phylum nadaria. Every species in this category has cells designed specifically for stinging, 
and if you've been in the ocean and unlucky, you may have already experienced that. All Nadaria species also have radial symmetry. That means if you look at them from the top, they're the same all the way around. Lobsters, phylum, arthropod. Arthropods is the largest of all the described animal phyla. You can find arthropods in every environment on the planet. It contains everything from these lobsters to tiny mosquitoes. Another characteristic of arthropods is they have soft bodies protected by hard exoskeletons. Bald eagle, chordata. The chordata phyla is probably my favorite, mainly because it contains the humans. Everything in this phyla has, essentially, a spinal column. Starfish phylum, echinoderms. A key feature of animals found in this phylum is they all have prickly bodies, and nearly all of them universally can be found on the ocean floor, just like this guy. So that's our trip to the aquarium. We had lots of fun, saw many different animals. My young learner learned a lot about new terminology like amphibians and mammals. My old learner got back into the series on taxonomy. If you enjoyed our video or any others, be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next week.